Okay, so last section uh, we're going to look at this week is um, 4.1. We started it yesterday looking at the definitions of the six trig functions. And now we're going to use those definitions today to solve triangles. That's what pretty much every problem is going to be today, solving a triangle. All right, so basically, uh, when they ask you to solve a triangle, there's six things to find. Find all the sides, find all the angles. Now, out of those six things, some of them you're already going to know. First of all, we're always dealing with right triangles. So what does that tell you about one of the angles in the triangle? One of them is, yeah, one of them is 90, so you're never going to have to find that. So that's already one thing that's automatically done all the time. And I can't just give you a problem like this and say solve. I have to give you two other pieces of information. Okay. So depending on what I give you for information to start with, it'll kind of affect what you have to do to solve it. Right. There's really um, two cases we're going to look at. So. When you're solving a right triangle, I need to start you off with one of these two things. In addition to the 90. The 90 is given. You're going to have the 90 degree angle all the time. But in addition to that, I either need to give you another side and another angle, or I could give you two sides. One of these situations is going to involve inverse trig, the other one isn't. So we'll, um, we'll take a look at that as we go through it. So now we're going, to, we're going to finally see what the connection is between inverse trig, which is what we did the first part of the week, and this section we're doing now. Okay, how, how do these kind of come together? So for most people, especially at first, it's, it's helpful to draw out a picture because you can then see like what's across from what. Right? At first, sometimes people have trouble just visualizing it all in their head. So we'll make a sketch. <coughs> and then we're going to organize our information in a table. So the table is purely just for you so you can write down everything you know and everything that you need to find. And as far as, um, as far as really explaining it, we're just going to jump into uh, some examples and then I'll, I'll just say some, some things as we're going through the example. This is the kind of thing, it just makes more sense to explain it as you're actually doing a problem. Okay. So we're going to solve the triangle. Okay. Everybody have the, uh, the top part here? So remember, we're going to be using different letters. Um, does anyone remember from yesterday, what are the, um, the letters that we normally use for the sides? A, B, and C. Anything special about which one has to go where? Yeah? Yeah, C is the hypotenuse. As long as you do that, you're fine. Um, and then does anyone remember the names of the two Greek letters for the angles? Yep. Alpha and beta. Alpha and beta. Al alpha across from A, beta across from B. So if you need that picture again, you can set up every problem like this. And then just fill in whatever you know. If you flip your, if you tend to draw triangles by flipping it this way, that's fine too. The only thing that matters is you always keep A and alpha across, B, beta, and C is the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter how you flip or rotate your triangle, because nothing that we actually sketch is to scale. Okay. All right, so in this problem, they're telling me B is 2, alpha is 40. They're giving me a side, and they're giving me one of the angles. That is 
Let's call that case one. Side and an angle. All right, um, so what's the first thing that I um, suggest you, you do with that? Just make a quick sketch, and the sketch is mainly so you can figure out what is opposite and adjacent, because you're going to need to know that. So it makes it easier to visualize. So we'll have B and beta. I don't know beta. A, we're going to put over there, and that's alpha. And the hypotenuse is uh, C. Okay, so here's our sketch, and now you can visualize, okay, A is opposite to 40, 2 is adjacent to the 40. Maybe you could figure that out just by looking at this. But if not, hopefully now you can from the picture. All right, so we got a picture. Next thing we're going to do is make a table. Okay, the way I make the table is I put the three sides in one column and the three angles in the other. Now, the third angle is always the 90. So you're never going to have to write anything other than 90 right there. Um, A we don't know. C we don't know. That's why I put boxes around them. Uh, B was given. Alpha was given. And beta we don't know. Is there anything there that we can find uh, pretty quickly without really too much work? Yeah, that's angle. We can get the other angle because we've got two out of three, and as long as you know what they're all supposed to add up to, you can figure out beta. Um, so what um, what would beta be here? Fifty. Yeah, it would be fifty. Any question on why that's 50? Okay. Now, the other things we have to find are A and C. Anytime you want to find a side, you always have to pick an angle as your perspective, right? Because remember, we talked about opposite and adjacent. And depending on which angle you use, it changes the perspective of opposite and adjacent. Now, you have a choice. You could use alpha or you could use beta. Which one do you think I should use? And technically, you could use either one, but I have a really good reason why I would pick one of those and not the other one. Beta. Yeah. Why? Because it's on the same side as the A side. It's in between the A and C sides. So, because it's in that position, does that make anything like easier or harder? Is that because either angle will work? It doesn't really matter where the angles are. That's not the reason why I would pick one over the other. But at least you took a shot. Yeah. I would do alpha because you already know what B is, so you can use that. Okay, I would definitely use alpha, but for another reason. But I would use alpha. Anybody know why I would pick alpha over beta? Where did alpha come from? It was what? Okay. Did everybody hear what he said? He said it was given. Yep. It was given. What about beta? Where did that come from? Well, complementary angle of the uh, 40 degrees. Okay, so even just being, you don't even have to be too specific, but just like, where did, so, originally beta wasn't there, 
And now it's there. So we must have figured it out, right? Somehow? We figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not up to yeah, it's down to 180, yep, yeah. So, why would I pick alpha over beta? Because you know it's right. Yes, I know alpha is right. Yes, Good job. Courtney, if, did you say that? I, I if you use used beta, and you made a mistake finding it, then guess what? Everything else you use is now going to be wrong, because you used something that was wrong. So, the way we solve a problem like this is don't ever use anything that you find to find something else. Always use the stuff that was given to you, right? Which means in this problem, you're going to use the 40 degree angle for everything. Now, I know the 50 is right. I mean, 40 plus 50 is 90, obviously. There's no mistake there. But still, you could make some kind of mistake on the test, so always use the one that was given. All right. So now we figured that out. We're going to use the 40. And it doesn't matter which side you do first at all, A or C. So let's, um, let's do A. So I'm going to circle a side that I want to find, just so I focus on that. And remember I said you always have to use what was given. So anytime you want to find something, you're really going to involve three pieces of information. Two of the things that were given to you, and the one thing that you're trying to find. Any questions on that idea. So you're always using the two things that are given and then circle whatever it is you want to find. Now, we just have to figure out the names of these two sides from the perspective of the 40. What's the name of the side that's labeled A from the perspective if you were standing at 40? Okay. What is it? Yep, the side is opposite. And what about on the side that's labeled 2? Adjacent. Okay, so now that tells us something. The side we already know is the adjacent. The side we want to know is the opposite. Every problem we do today is going to involve one of three trig functions, sine, cosine, or tangent. We're not using the other three because it's easier to use sine, cosine, and tangent with a calculator because you already have the buttons right there for it, okay? So, this problem that we're doing involves opposite and adjacent. There's only one trig function out of sine, cosine, and tangent that has opposite and adjacent. Which trig function has those two? Tangent. Tangent, yep. tangent is opposite over adjacent. So now we know which trig function we're going to use. Tangent. Okay. Any question on how we figured out it was tangent? Okay, and now from here we just fill in our equation. So the tangent of, and remember you always plug in an angle. Um, what's the angle I'm using? 40. 40 equals opposite over adjacent. A divided by 2. A divided by 2. And now we just get A by itself, and that's our answer. Right, so, Andrew, what, um, what would I have to do here to get rid of this 2 and get A by itself? Multiply by 2. Yep, multiply both sides by 2. And we have to type that in, but that is the answer. So the length of A is 2 tangent 40. Um, now, I didn't say this, pronounce it properly. <coughs> 2 tangent 40 what? Degrees. Okay, so on my calculator, I want to make sure I'm in degrees. Um, in fact, every problem today from this section and on the test will be degrees. <coughs> All right, so I'm already in degrees, so that's good. Um, let's go 2 tangent 40. You type it in pretty much exactly the way you see it written. So A um, is about 1 point, we'll just say 678. Okay, 1.678. And I'll just put that up in the table. So now I've got five out of six things. I have one more to find. Side C. 
Now, you know two of the sides. So what could you do at that point like, if you know two of the sides? Yeah? Pythagorean theorem. You could. You could do Pythagorean theorem. But why do you think I'm going to say Pythagorean theorem is not a good idea? Yep. Because you don't want square 1.678. Why not? It's not going to come out good. Okay, so first of all, this is rounded. Right? So if it's, if it's rounded, because this, this was wherever the calculator went, but it was 1.6781922. So 1.678 is rounded. What's another reason why you might not want to use this number? Besides the fact it's rounded. Yep? Because it wasn't given. So okay. We don't know if it's right. Okay. If that's wrong and you use it, then that's wrong. Okay. The way I'm showing you guys to do this, I'm showing you how to do all three separate. So you could still get one of them wrong and get everything else right. Okay, so you could still get some something right. Alright, so let's find C. And we're gonna find it the same way we found A. Stick with the angle they gave you, stick with the side they gave you, and this time I'm circling the side that I want to know. So I'm still using adjacent, but what's the other side that I'm going to use this time? It's not opposite. Yes, I'm going to use hypotenuse. So now you look at it and you say, okay, the side that I know is the adjacent, the side I'm trying to find is the hypotenuse. Out of the three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, you just have to find the one that has adjacent and hypotenuse in it. So what trig function out of sine, cosine, and tangent has those two? Yeah. Cosine. Yeah. So we're going to set this up now. <coughs> What are we finding? We're finding C. All right, so cosine. What's going to go in the parentheses? Cosine of 40 degrees. Yep, it's always your angle. Equals. Um, and Brianna, what is, um, what is cosine again? It's what over what? Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse, yep. And what's my adjacent um, here? Two. Two, and my hypotenuse? Yeah. Yep, exactly. Two divided by C. Okay. Now we have to solve it and um, get C by itself. Okay. So there's actually a trick here um, to do this. I'm going to show you kind of the other way first, and then you'll, you'll kind of notice what happens. So there's the original problem. I'm just going to copy it down here for a second. And the first thing I want to do is at least get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to put the C on the other side. Um, Sebastian, how would you move this C over to the other side? When you multiply. Yep. Multiply. It's kind of like what we just did before. So now you've got C times cosine of 40 degrees equals 2. And now, what would be your last step um, to get C by itself? Um, if you had a plus sign right here, I would say yes, minus cosine 40 from each side. But you don't have a plus. Yeah, Max? The inverse cosine 40? Um, not yet. You're gonna, we are going to do inverse cosine, um, but that's not going to come up. Well, you'll see. But not yet, but that's, uh, keep that in mind for later. Um, this is just like C times some number equals 2. So it doesn't matter what's in that box. What operation do you use to move what's in that box to the other side? Division. Okay? It doesn't matter what the number is. If you really want to know what it is, it's the number... 0.766, but that doesn't matter. So we're going to divide by that number on the left, that number on the right, and we'll get our answer for C. Now, I'm actually never going to type in cosine of 40 and get 0.766. 
I'm going to type it in like this. 2 divided by cosine 40. So if I was doing this problem, I would have just jumped right to the final answer. I would never really even bother to find out that the cosine of 40 is 0.766. That doesn't matter. What you want is 2 divided by cosine 40. Okay, so 2.611. And there's all your sides and all your angles. I'm going to come back to this table um, in a second and show you something. But first, I want you to look at, I'll just finish writing this. Look at what you had for the final answer. And look at what you started with right here. Does anybody see what you could just do instead of going through these two steps? And this is going to happen every time. If you just compare what you started with to what you ended with, just look what happened. Okay? Yeah, if you just take the cosine 40 and the C and switch them, that works every time. Why? Because of this stuff right here. So if I had a problem like 2 equals 3 over x, it's exactly the same type of setup. This is the answer. Just switch what's on the bottom and what's on the other side. It works every time. Okay. So let's go back up and look at the, um, at the table. <coughs> so one thing I usually check really quick is make sure that the biggest side is across from the biggest angle and the smallest side is with the smallest angle. That should always happen. If it doesn't, then something, something went very wrong. Um, the other thing you could do now is check your answer with Pythagorean theorem. We're not using Pythagorean theorem to find it, but let's, let's check and see if a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If it does, then you're probably guaranteed you, you did the problem right. Okay. So we got 1.678 squared plus 2, was it 2? Yeah, 2 squared. Gives me 6.815. Now let's take C and square it. 2.611. I got 6.817 instead of 6.816 if I round it. So does that mean something is wrong here? A squared plus B squared does not equal C squared exactly. It's not exactly wrong because A was rounded. Yeah, we've got all kinds of rounding here. So I mean, they're pretty close, 6.817, 6.816. So I would say, yeah, we, we did everything correct. All right. So I, I would only check your answer with Pythagorean theorem if you have time. Okay. If you don't, just hope that you get it right and didn't make any mistakes. Any questions on, on that? Okay, let's try um, let's try this one. So this will be the last one that I do of this type. Um, and then I'm going to switch to the, uh, the uh, other type we're going to do. All right. So this time they gave you all the information in the table, so you don't you don't really have to set up. Table yourself. Okay, so Anthony, I got everything there in a table. Um, but what do we like to do so we can kind of visualize it a little better? Sketch it out. Yeah, we'll sketch it. Doesn't matter how you sketch it, just draw any kind of right triangle you want. Put A across from alpha, put B across from beta, and make C the hypotenuse, and you can't go wrong, no matter which way you draw your triangle. I'm going to put A over here, put alpha there, um, let's put B at the bottom, and beta at the top. Now, since you're going to find all three of these things separate, technically it doesn't matter which one you do first. You could choose to do C, B, and then alpha. I always do the angle first because I think it's the quickest one. And then I feel good. I got one thing done. It makes me happy. 
right. So let's, uh, let's start with Alpha. Um, so Ryan, could you tell me um, what Alpha is going to be here? Yeah. 70. Yeah, it's going to be 70. Okay, so now we've got Alpha. Um, how about uh, Brandon? Now that I have it, should I use Alpha to find anything else? Yes. Why should I? Why do you like that number? I don't. So you're gonna have to convince me why you like it. Well, you could change your mind and tell me why you don't like it and agree with me. Anybody help him out? Why don't I like the number seventy? I don't. I don't like sevens. They're prime. They're awful numbers. Actually, that's why I don't like it. Uh, because that one wasn't in there. Okay. Found that one out. So what? It wasn't. Um, it could be wrong. Could be wrong, right? That's the problem. You found it. If it's wrong and you use it, guess what? Now you got that wrong. And then if you use that, now you got that wrong. So don't use anything that you found. Okay. Always go back to what was given. So circle these two things. You're gonna use that to do everything else. Um, hello, uh, Matt. You want to do um, B or C? Uh, C. C. Okay. It makes no difference which one you do. So, ultimate goal now is to figure out the trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent. If you're stuck, name these two sides first. Figure out if they're opposite, adjacent, or whatever they are. Um, so, Emily, do you think you know which um, trig function we're going to use? Right, let's name the sides first. Um, what is the side that's 6? Opposite. Nope, that's B. Oh. B, because that's the farthest away one. Adjacent. That one is adjacent. Because remember, your perspective now is you're standing at the 20. So 6 is right next to you. So that's opposite. And C is always the hypotenuse. All right, so you want to take a, take a second shot at it and um, see if you can tell me the trig function? Cosine? Yeah, cosine. This, you know adjacent. You don't know hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse, cosine. So let's write that down. So cosine of... Um, Liz, can you tell me what I'm going to fill in for my, um, my angle? 20. Yep, 20. Equals. And Grace, um, Emily just told us cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the adjacent? Adjacent is 6. And the hypotenuse? Uh, C. C. This time, I'm going to use that trick to get C by itself. C equals 6 divided by cosine 20. Type that in, and we're done. Good. So let's um, see what we got. 6 divided by cosine of 20. Now, before I hit enter, is there anything I know about B? Just looking at some information I already have. Like, do I know that it's definitely going to be bigger than something or smaller than something? Say Justin. Um, it will be bigger than A. Yeah. You think B is going to be bigger than A? Oh, wait. I thought it was C. Yeah, C is always going to be the biggest. C is going to be bigger than everything. But what about B? Yeah, it's got to be shorter because the angle is smaller. Yeah. So if I type it in and I get an answer of like 8 point something or something bigger than 6, then I know right away something's wrong. 
So that's one thing that I do in my head when I do it, just to make sure that I didn't make an obvious mistake. All right. Um, so we got 6.385. Um, oh, because we're solving for C. I'm sorry. So yeah, you were right. I was asking about. I was asking about B. I thought we were doing B. We were doing C. So six point three eight five. So yeah, you are right. C will definitely be bigger. And now B has to be the smallest. Okay, it's got to be the smallest. Okay. All right. So now we'll we'll find B. Circle B, and this time we're going to use the 20 and the 6. All right, now, uh, Brandon, I got a question for you. Um, I got two sides here, right? Two out of three. How come I don't just do Pythagorean theorem to get B? Because we have a decimal. Okay. Well, you can use a calculator, so the calculator will handle all the you know, decimal. But yeah, if you had to square that in your head, that's a lot harder than just 6 squared. But yeah, you could use a calculator to do it. Any other reason why I wouldn't want to use Pythagorean theorem to get B? Think back to two minutes ago. There's something I don't like about this number, 6.385. It's the same thing I didn't like about the number 70. This it could be wrong. Could be wrong, all right? If you use that and it's wrong, you get B wrong automatically, all right? So stay away from things that you've calculated, okay? All right, um, so we're going to find B. Uh, we've already labeled it. B is opposite. So I need something that has opposite, and I need something that has adjacent. Forget about hypotenuse. Opposite and adjacent. <coughs> Tangent. So let's find B. Tangent of, look at your angle, 20. 20 equals opposite over adjacent. Opposite B, adjacent 6. B divided by 6. And this is the case where you just multiply each side by the bottom. And that's your answer. 6 tangent 20. So the calculations themselves usually don't have very many steps. I think setting it up and just figuring out the trig function, that's probably harder than just multiplying both sides by 6. So you've got 6 tangent 20, 2.184. All right, so I told you guys one trick that I use just to check and see if anything's wrong. Always make sure the biggest side is across from the biggest angle, smallest side, smallest angle. The other thing you can check is if you add any two sides together, they have to add up to be bigger than the third. That's a rule with, with triangles. So if you add up A and B, it has to be bigger than C. If you add B and C, it's got to be bigger than A. And if you add A and C, it should be bigger than B. Okay. And that does work here. So if I got an answer, of, for B, of like 0 0.01, something really, really small. And I said, well, if I add them together, I get 6 plus 0 0.01, that's 6.01. <laughs> that's not bigger than 6.3. Then I would know something, something's wrong. Okay. So any questions on the type where they give you a side and an angle to start with? Okay. What's, um, what's different here compared to the last two? Yeah? You've been given two sides. You've been given two sides. Yep. So let's draw it out, and then um, we'll go from there. So we've got A, alpha, B, beta, and C. So 
what do you think I am okay with you using this time that I wasn't in the last couple of albums? Yeah? Pythagorean theorem. Brandon, I have a question for you. How come, how come I'm okay with Pythagorean theorem this time? Because we didn't calculate the numbers. Nice. So we didn't calculate those numbers, right? They were both given. So if you use them, you're not using anything that you found. So let's do Pythagorean theorem um, to get C. So that's one thing that's different right off the bat. Okay, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. Um, Alyssa, could you set up my Pythagorean theorem using those letters and numbers? 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. Yep. So that gives me 9 plus 4. And this gives me C squared is 13. So I want the square root. Now, one thing that's a little different in this part, when you are solving a triangle, you can actually just write the decimal. When we did the stuff we did yesterday, like finding the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the secant, cosecant, cotangent, we just left it as the square root. Okay? So why they do that, it's just, I don't know. It's like, why um, do they use red to mean stop? Uh, it's, I don't know, somebody decided it. So when you're actually solving a triangle, you can go ahead and do the decimal. And then square root. Um, square root. C squared. Top left. Uh, that's squared. Top and that's, oh, well, I guess that's over there. Yeah, it's just below it. But thank you. You pointed me in the right direction. Um, 3.606. So now we've got C. Now that you have it, forget about it. Don't use it for anything else. All right. Um, now we need alpha and beta. How come we couldn't just add two angles up and subtract from 180 like we did before? Yeah. We don't have another angle. We don't have another angle. We're missing two. Right? So now, we're going to circle the two things that we're given. You're always given two things, whether it's a side and an angle or two sides. This time it's two sides. And it doesn't matter which one we do first. Let's do alpha. Okay. So now the next step is always figure out the trig function. It's either sine, cosine, or tangent. Um, how about uh, Cal? What, what's the name of um, the sine that's two units long from the perspective of alpha? Uh, wait, what was the question? What's the name of the side that's two units long? from the perspective of alpha. Do you know like the, the three words I'm thinking of? There's like three different words we've used like on the last, like, let's go back here. The three words in black. Uh, it's the adjacent one. Yes, it's adjacent. What about the three? It's opposite. Uh, yep, it's opposite. So can you tell that if you want to that How can you tell? Yeah, isn't it like opposites and one furthest from the angle? Yes. So since I chose to solve alpha, okay, we're going to do beta next. But if you choose to stand at alpha, look like a cross, and that's the one that's always opposite. Okay, so it's better. Yep. And you could have chosen to do beta first, and then opposite would have been two. We're going to do that after. Um, okay, so opposite and adjacent. What trig function am I using here? Tangent. Yep. So let's set it up. So tangent of um, Isaiah. What's my angle? So what do what do we put in there? Theta or no alpha. Alpha. Yep. It's a variable. Equals and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Three divided by two. That's a very different looking equation than anything we've done so far. Why? What's different about it? Yeah? Because we don't have an angle. We don't have an angle. Usually the letter was over in the fraction. It was either the top or the bottom. This time, it's inside of the tangent function. So now we want to get alpha by itself. And the only way to get 
alpha by itself is kind of like you would get x by itself um, if you had something like this. If you want to get the variable by itself and it's inside another function, you have to cancel that function out with the function that cancels it out. In this case, it would be squared, so the answer would be 9. What function can I use to cancel out tangent? Next. Inverse tangent. Inverse tangent. Yep. Inverse tangent of what's on the left. And take the inverse tangent of what's on the right. There is no multiplication happening there. Just like there is no multiplication right there. There's a number. You're doing something to it. Okay. Here's our number. That's what we're doing to it. We're inverse tangenting. Tangenting. I just made that up. All right. Um, so on the left, inverse tangent, regular tangent cancel out. Now, technically, those only cancel out if you're between negative 90 and 90. I don't even know the answer to my problem yet. But how can I guarantee you the answer has to be between negative 90 and 90? Yep. Yeah? It's a right triangle. We're dealing with a triangle, so this answer is definitely between negative 90 and 90. In fact, I can tell you it's between 0 and 90. All right. So the rule we learned yesterday does work right now. So alpha equals inverse tangent of 3 over 2. So second inverse tangent, 3 halves, and you get an angle of 56 point three one zero if we round up fifty six point three one zero okay so now we've got two out of three of the angles we could just take and subtract this one from ninety right fifty six point three one minus minus it from ninety but why um, why would that not be the best idea could be wrong Right? Could be wrong. I'm going to do that just kind of off to the side. Keep that number in mind. And when we find beta, it should be 33.69. Should be, as long as we did this correct. If I get a different answer for beta than 33.69, then I did something wrong when I found alpha. Or I did something wrong finding beta, but some, something's wrong. Okay, so let's find, uh, find beta. Again, we're going to stick with the two sides that we're given. Circle those in red. Two and the three. And this time we want to find beta. So this is the first time that this has ever happened. We just switched our perspective in the problem. We changed, we walked to another angle, and now we're standing there. So what's going to happen now? Yeah? The opposite of the adjacent are going to change. Yes. So now you're looking at everything from the perspective of beta, because you're solving for beta. Yep. In the other problems, if you were to do a different perspective, would you get the same answers? That would be assuming you did everything correct yourself. But like, if you did it all correct, but you yeah. changed the perspective, it still the same answers? Yep, it would be. Yep. But we don't do that, and Brandon can tell you why. Uh, so. Now the 2 is opposite, and the 3 is adjacent. So we're still using opposite and adjacent. So what function am I going to use again? Tangent. I'm going to use tangent again, but it's not going to be exactly the same. It's going to end up being flipped. So the tangent of beta equals opposite over adjacent. Um, 2 over 3 instead of 3 over 2. And how do I get rid of tangent? Yep, and the correct word is you are taking the inverse tangent of each side. Just like you might say take the square root of each side. Okay. Take the inverse tangent of what's on the left, gone. Inverse tangent of what's on the right, and remember I think it was 33.6 something. Let's see what we got. Inverse tangent of 2 thirds. Yep, 33.69. So since I got exactly the same answer doing it two different ways, um, well, I had the other one somewhere, 
we know that it's it's pretty sure it's going to be right. <coughs> okay, so that's solving a problem where they give you two sides. That's the only time you have to use inverse trig if they give you two sides. If they start you with a side and an angle, don't worry about inverse trig. You're not going to use it at all. Okay. Any question on that side? All right. That's uh, um, kind of the same type. Okay. Let's uh, just finish up with this one. If you just kind of skim the problem very quickly, you should be able to figure out if this is a problem you would need inverse trig for. Do you think this is a problem you need inverse trig for? No. Because the question here is not what is the angle, right? If they were asking a question about an angle you might need inverse trig, the question is about the length of a side when we make a triangle. It's about the side where the ladder is. Okay. So, and they're giving you an angle in the problem. <laughs> Anytime you are given an angle, you never need inverse trig. Okay. So, you're leaning a 20 foot ladder against the house, and the ladder is at an angle of 17 degrees. How high will the ladder reach? Okay, so remember, the ladder won't reach 20 feet because you've angled it. So, the more of an angle you put on it, the less high it can reach. Let's, um, let's just draw that out. So we've got the ground. Got a building over here. And we've leaned a 20-foot ladder against the building. That's my 90. Okay, um, 20 feet. Where is the number 20 going to go? go in this picture when I label it. It's the hypotenuse. Okay, the ladder is your, um, is your hypotenuse. And now the ladder and the house says there's a 17 degree angle. So what angle is going to be 17 degrees? Where would I put that? The top of the what? Yeah, right at the top of the triangle. So it's the top angle right inside there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this bigger. So that is 17. That's 20. And the question is, how high will the ladder reach? Well, here's the top of the ladder right there. So basically, find that line in black. How high will it reach? Now, they could have asked you a different question. An easier question would have been, what's the angle between the ground and the ladder? That one would be really quick. Um, and also, how far is the base of the ladder from the house? They could have asked you that, um, but they didn't. So, given, given, and what you want to find. Okay. Um, does anyone think they can tell me what, um, what trig function we need? Okay. Let's see. Um, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Yep, perfect. So cosine of my angle equals A over 20. Okay, and to finish that up and get A um, by itself, um, how about, um, Emily, what would be my last step? Um, so on the right side right now, we have oh, A divided by 20. Sorry. Yeah, so we're going to multiply, cancel it out. Type that in, and that's your answer. 20 cosine 17. So 20 cosine 17 gives you a height of about 19.13 feet. Now, a lot of times I ask people, what angle do you think the ladder would have to be at so it would only reach up half as high? So it's a 20-foot ladder, 
so it would only reach 10 feet high. What angle do you think it would be? Like if you tried to think about it, like almost just using common sense, like think about this triangle. What would this angle have to be so it only reaches half as high? 34. 34? So we could try 34. Um, you could just type in the same, same thing again. Just change uh, 17 to 34. And if you had the ladder at a 34 degree angle, it would actually still reach um, almost 17 feet up. So 45 is the one that people guess a lot, but actually if you put the ladder at a 45 degree angle, it still reaches over 14 feet up. You'd actually have to put it all the way at a 60 degree angle, which obviously the ladder would no longer stay against the house if you fall. But you'd have to put the ladder almost like that. It would have to be a 60 degree angle. So a lot of people guess 45 because they think, oh, 45 is half of 90. And if you're half of 90, the ladder probably reaches half as high. And that would work if these graphs were straight lines. Thinking, oh, half. But the graph of sine and cosine are these waves. So that makes everything a little more confusing when you ask a question like that. It's not as, not as obvious. So any, um, any questions on that? Great, so that um, finishes up okay. everything that um, is going to be on this week's test. That's the homework tonight on page 255. 31 to 39, odd, 43 and 47. And 51 to 55, odd. Okay. I will be after school tomorrow if anybody needs to stay after to make anything up. If you need to come during the day, you can come any period you want.